Earlier in the day, it was brought to my attention that an item at SI.com focused on the Penn State Nittany Lions from a micro site within SI.com. I think it's all Nittany Lions or something along those lines. Had quotes from James Franklin, the head coach at Penn State, about the recruitment of Saquon Barkley by the Philadelphia Eagles. And the whole point was that when the Eagles recruited, recruited Saquon Barkley, they tapped into his Penn State history and tied it together to try to get the deal done. And the way that Franklin explained it, oh, we actually have it. We actually have I didn't realize we had it. Here it is. Don't listen to me as if you ever do. Listen to James Franklin potentially putting Howie Roseman, the Eagles GM, in a jackpot earlier this week. Have a listen. For him now to come back and be able to play within the state, um, you know, in Philadelphia, you know, he said that was one of the first things that Howie said to him on the phone as part of kind of his sales pitch to him uh, was not only the Philadelphia Eagles and, and that, but obviously the connection with Penn State and the fan bases as well. So uh, <laughs> thanks, James. Thanks a lot, James. Thanks for getting us in trouble with the league, James. The, the Eagles have denied any improper contact, and they insist that all recruitment during the negotiating window happens only between the team and the agent representing the player. But that sure as hell ain't what James Franklin said, Chris. No, it's definitely not. Now, it's, it's different. It's, it's secondhand, right? So where it could be – this is where there's – it's not necessarily the same as Kirk Cousins, who's, you know, the guy and speaking about his experiences, you know, basically illegal tampering, right? This is a little of, like, secondhand communication – so, you know, I guess that like takes a little bit of the harshness away, you know, and also I, you know, listen, we know how those conversations could go sometimes where it could have been like, and maybe it was Saquon's agent that talked to Howie and that was part of the sales pitch. And he just told, John, you know, Coach Franklin, like, hey, yeah, Howie, you know, part of his sales pitch is, you know, the Penn State thing and all that. And maybe he didn't. So I, again, I don't know. But like, uh, as far as you know, compared to what it happened with Atlanta and Kirk Cousins or other ones we've seen, I mean, come on, this is the least egregious thing in the world. I almost like uh, with star players, players that you know move the needle, difference making type players that become free agents, right? And let's just say there's a hundred of them, right? I would almost bet 90 out of 100 get a call from somebody on the team to kind of just introductory, let's talk to you and meet you or, or talk to you and get a feel for you, you know, illegally, right? Uh, I would almost always with those type of guys. You know, the lower level guys, no, they're they're not going to get that. It's not much of a, as much of a financial investment and fanfare and all of that. But, yeah, I, I think that's – commonplace in a lot of ways for the GM or an owner to reach out to, you know, might be player on our team that we're going to throw a lot of money to here very soon. Let me just say hi and make sure the guy's a normal human being and he's not some jerk or something like that. You know, I, I do think that's a very normal part of the process in the NFL. I know it's normal, but it's abnormal as it relates to the rules. I got two things to say and then we yeah. have to take a break because we almost put a full hour into this segment. One, from the NFL's perspective, look at what they did. They create this fiction, this legal tampering period, at a time when tampering is rampant, everyone looks bad, it all looks goofy, you have the clock strike 12, it used to be midnight on a Friday when the league year began, and by 12.30 you'd have these multi-million dollar deals already negotiated, when they weren't allowed to have any communication of any kind whatsoever to express any interest in the player until 25 minutes earlier. It was a joke. So the NFL sets up this separate system that allows it to happen but says, this is the way it's got to be. You can't talk to the player. You can only talk to the agent. So I could see why the NFL would be pissed if people are taking liberties within this 52-hour window that was set up specifically to give everyone cover for a rules violation that made everyone look bad, that makes the entire organization look corrupt. That's point one. Point two, with the Kirk Cousins thing, I was already interested in what he was going to say at his press conference because we'd been looking at it and saying, well, how do they know that his Achilles is fine? How did they get medical information? How do, you know, something about this felt like it was wrong, felt like it was too much, felt like there might be tampering. So I was looking and listening to what Kirk had to say when he said, here's the smoking gun last night. The Eagles thing, I had someone raise that with me. I had someone else in the broader league apparatus say, have a look at this. 
And when that goes on, Chris, it makes me wonder, in this heated rivalry between the Giants and the Eagles, how much more likely are the Giants to make a stink about this than the Vikings are to make a stink about what the Falcons did? I think it's a much bigger deal from the standpoint of what is Tommy going to do when Spider tells him to go F himself? And Robert De Niro says, you're just going to take that? Because in this case, it's the Giants fans who may be saying to the Giants, you're just going to take that from the Eagles? What's the world coming to? That's what I think makes this one different. Yeah, I hear you. It is. It's arch rivals. We know that, right? I mean, John Mara, of course, has a big place in the league office. Saquon is definitely a guy that has the heart of the Giant fans, so they're bothered by this, and especially when it goes to the Eagles. And then I think at a base level, too, you know, the league is scared of the Eagles. The league is jealous of the Eagles. There's a lot of people. So they, I, I think people got their eye on their Eagles for anything because right now it's w what Howie Roseman is doing and, and the way the team is built. I mean, it's on another level from everybody else in the league. It's, it's, it's really not even close. So I think, yeah, people are looking for the reasons to shoot down the Eagles or watch them a little bit right now because they got so many good players, so many assets, so many things going on positively in their direction. Howie's ahead of the curve, it seems like, every year, right? So I think there is people looking for the Eagles to st you know, stumble or mess up a little bit and, and put a little pressure on them. Yes, and we'll see how it goes. The league denied or declined, excuse me. The Eagles denied it. The league declined comment last night when approached by ESPN on this issue. We've got a pending email to the league asking them for a refresher on the rules about the the legal tampering period and what is and isn't allowed. And and uh, we asked for comment on this Falcons. Sure, thing. they're thrilled with you this morning. To say about it. I think the I think they're well, using hey, the I'm word so, we started sorry. the show with. They're going, um, hey, wait. Uh, with that prick Florio, <laughs> bada -bam -bam. we'll start the yeah. segment and we'll end the segment with the same thing. <laughs> great, great callback. On a scale of one to ten, they would have me at a hundred, frankly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I and I and I and I wear that and I wear that as a badge of honor uh, because what the hell else am I going to do with it? Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.